Good morning, everyone. This is David Arnold. I've got some cameras set up here, and I wanted to talk to you about uh, different types of camera formats as we uh, delve into our large format assignment this week. Um, I hope you're doing well and getting settled into the class. I want to remind you to be uh, engaged in the discussions and to be sure and follow up on any questions that I post to your discussion post. Uh, typically, I will post a question to every post that you make in the discussion uh, topic area, so be sure to look in on that. Uh, I've been uh, making an effort to tag you, to remind you to uh, look in on the question and to respond uh, in, a, in a reasonable period of time to allow our discussions to move forward and that we can have a, a really uh, important and engaging exchange of ideas. Behind me I have uh, s several different uh, camera formats. Uh, this, uh, form this assignment we're working on, this module, is working with the 4x5 format, which is this uh, camera here behind me, which is a view of camera, 4x5, and it takes um, sheet film that's this size, 4x5, to compare it to the different format sizes we have. This is 120 film, and that would go into this camera here, medium format. And then we have a 35 millimeter film, and you can see the, the difference in the sizes. So as we're uh, looking in module two with the wet collodion photographers, and in the large format assignment, we're looking at what we term a photographer's language. So every decision that a photographer makes with equipment, with different format types, with different types of film, with different types of lenses, each one of these choices that a photographer makes dramatically influences the photograph that we see. So we're paying attention to those decisions that photographers make, including the settings that they may have on their, on their lenses, the, again, the film choices, the film speeds they cho choose, all of these creative controls on our cameras are things which uh, dramatically influence the look of an image. And we need to be aware of that and begin to be, uh, pay attention to those kinds of decisions that photographers make because it's critical to understanding the art of photography. Um, so let me look at, we'll start here. This is a 35 millimeter camera, an Olympus, Olympus 35 millimeter, one of the earliest compact cameras very, very uh, beautifully designed and engineered, and uh, these are, are very inexpensive now to purchase. For example, this one I got at a, um, a white elephant sale for $40. It's in perfect condition, a wonderful machine. 35 millimeter comes in all different shapes and sizes. This is an early F, Nikon F, one of their first um, pentaprism 35 millimeter cameras. And the nice thing about this is the these old, old cameras, this was built in 1959. This is a modern contemporary zoom lens. So any um, Nikon F lens will fit on these Nikon bodies. Um, this is a Roly, a little small little Roly camera. This is a great little travel camera. Again, they come in all different shapes and sizes. This camera over here is what we call a Pentax 6x7. 6x7 refers to the film, the film size. Uh, six centimeters by seven centimeters. This again is a medium format 120 film camera. Different interchangeable lenses. Has a pantoprism on it. This is a really wonderful machine. Again, this is a 4x5 behind me. This is a Calumet 4x5 with interchangeable lenses. These are some of the interchangeable lenses that go on that uh, camera, view camera. 4x5 cameras come in all kinds of different sizes and shapes. This is a uh, Another 4x5, large format camera. This is a press camera. This is the Graflex um, Crown Graphic, very popular camera today. It's, it's pretty inexpensive. You can find it on eBay, some of them for a $200 range, maybe a little bit less and a little bit more. Again, these take uh, 4x5 sheet film. This is a sheet film holder. It slides into the back like that. You pull out the, the film to expose it. You can use all types of media on this, color, black and white. It's really a versatile system. Interchangeable lenses on it. This camera was extremely popular in the 20th century. Every Pulitzer Prize winning photograph up to 1970 was created with this camera. And you can see it's lightweight. 
you can hand hold it, you can put it on a tripod, it really works well, it's great. Okay, to review, a photographer's language is built upon the decisions they make with the, with the equipment and the processes they use. So I want you to be really careful in looking for those uh, keys, those clues and the examples that we see in our, in our discussions. Be sure and post relevant discussions to our discussion topics and our assignments, and be sure to use your examples to support your discussions. Okay, I hope you're settling into the class and having a great time. I look forward to reading your Module 3 papers. Again, let's have a great week. Thank you.